God's Spirit strengthen us. May God's Spirit enlighten us. And may God's Spirit quicken us to action in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we just recognize the Holy Spirit among us? Today is his day. Is a special personality in the three and God. The action man, the practical man, the practical authority, that without him nothing happens in the church. And when we connect to him, we do exploits. May we be renewed today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us sit. Amen. I just want to talk about you will receive power to evangelize. You will receive power to do what? Evangelize. Because when power is given to you, it must be used for something. It's not supposed to be a stagnant power. Today we talk about the Pentecost. And here the Lord said, his disciples will receive power and by extension that we will also receive power. But the fulfillment of this promise as Jesus had said in John's Gospel chapter 14 took place on a particular day and within a particular context. Pentecost 50 58th day he ascended to heaven after 40 days from the resurrection. And then on the 10th day after the ascension, the Holy Spirit did what? Came. A little journey back to the Old Testament. In the prayer of the prophet Jeremiah 47. I think about verse 7 or thereabouts. In his prayer, after 10 days, God responded. A correspondence with the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus of the Holy Spirit after 10 days. Secondly, the Pentecost celebration is also within the agricultural context of the life of the people of Israel. Some people say it's an agricultural feast within which the Israelites brought their harvest products to thank God. In fact, the Lord gave a strict instruction about that to them what they were to do and how they were to celebrate that. Because there are three principal feasts the Israelites celebrated the Passover, the Feast of Weeks, which is the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. So this promise of God that they will receive power was to come on this particular celebration. The Israelites celebrated it, and for them, apart from bringing their first fruit to thank God, they also celebrated it or saw it as a celebration of the giving of the law by God in the Old Testament to Moses, which they called Shimkat Torah, the joy of the law. It was a very significant feast for them, which they never joked with. But in the new context or in the New Testament, it became the giving of God's grace in fullness to the church 
that brought about the life of the church. And so that's what we are celebrating today, the birthday of the church, when Jesus, together with the Father, sent the Holy Spirit, who was to come among them and then empower them anew. Now, this feast that God eventually fulfilled is aimed at something communicating power. Communicating power and authority so that they will be able to be witnesses. Now, this power that God is going to communicate the Israelites, their friends, has about three, four, five dimensions to it. The first dimension of this power is Dunamis power. Then you talk about Kratos power. Then you talk about Exousia power. Then you talk about Koa power. And then Istus. These are the dimensions of this power that Jesus had promised to the disciples that they were going to have. Now, when you talk about the dunamis power, it means resident authority and power that they were going to have. And you will find that in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, verses 21, or sorry, verses 32 through, 31 through 33, when the disciples had gathered to pray, they said that we are filled with what? power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has given each and every one of us power by the fact of our creation in his image and likeness. But the power that we have sometimes is resident. There are some of us who have authority, even some persons in positions, they have resident power, but they cannot exercise that power. Uh, there is, I think, in the in the machine world, there is this vehicle they call the Lamborghini. They said it has the highest horsepower. But the Lamborghini, when you carry it and pack it at a particular position, you don't know the kind of power that that engine carries until you put it on the road. When you put it on the road, no other car will overtake it. By then you put it into what? Action. And that is where we now talk about Kratos power. When you put it into action. When the ability to move is being accelerated and it does what? Takes off. So the Lord gives this power to his disciples so that they can put it into action through Kratos. And then you talk about the issues power. Issues power is a practical dimension again. But this time it talks about the resident ability and strength to do something or accomplish something. And then the other dimension when you talk about exousia. Exousia is the authority that is resident in government. When you talk about the governor of the state, when he appears, what happens? His enemies will begin to do what? Hide their face. Because he has the power to kill. He has the power to dethrone. The other day, uh, we are told the governor of River State did what? Dissolve the what? Cabinet. Because he has Dunamis power that was resident so he had to put it into action by exercising that authority he had to say I deserve the word cabinet and then some days after that we again heard that the governor is about to reconstitute the word cabinet because he has the power to now it is this power this exousia authority that makes you on the road when you get to UST Junction you will see some people with gun and one kind of dress. They will use tire and block every part of the road and leave a very small space. And then the traffic will run from here to where? Ikoku Junction. And nobody will utter a word. A word. When you come there, 
If you're a commercial uh, motor man, they will do what? Collect how much? Huh? Eh? Hundred. Five hundred. Two hundred. One thousand. Then they will give you change. Eh? They will give you what? Uh -huh. Even this morning, early this early morning, if you are not given private car, they will say, Oga, wind down. And you bring what? Money. And they give you what? Change. Because they have that exousia. That is why when you see a policeman, not the man ordinarily, sometimes you see the man very reggae, reggae, eh, slim. But because he's on uniform, and you know you are a huge man. When you hold him by his neck, you break his neck. But you will not try that because there is a power that is following that word, uniform that is putting on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, this is the kind of power God wants us to have. So that when you come and when you appear, when the devil sees you, he will be doing what? Running. That's what the Holy Spirit is to energize us to do. Amen. And that is the feast we are celebrating. The feast of power and authority given to us. But then, do we exercise this power? Now, the Lord gave this power to them on the day of Pentecost. And this power, if we don't understand it, then we cannot use it. First, in the Old Testament, this power was associated with Yahweh, with Elohim. And in the Hebrew rendering, he uses the word Ru'ah Elohim. Ru'ah Elion. That's the word that is used. And that word Ru'ah in the Hebrew language is translated wind or what? Breath. And then in the New Testament, the Greek equivalent of that word is pneuma, which is spirit. And then, friends, you will also remember that among the elements of the earth, you have what? Wind, breath, and you have sand, you have water, you have uh, what? What are they? About four or five elements of the earth. But then, in this dimension, in the spiritual realm, air, breath, wind, has the greater force. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is why, you see, the spirit of God is referred as what? Breath. And this breath has a force and an authority that is behind it. Now, a little bit back to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. It says that the spirit of the Lord hovered over the surface of the earth when everything was in what? Shambo. The breath of God gave power to created order or brought about created order. The disorder in nature was ordered when this breath or when this power was breathed upon the earth. In God's creating action precisely in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 when he had formed man, man had no breath in him. He had no power. He had no authority to do anything. He was lifeless until the breath of God was breathed onto what? him. He was quickened into action and he became a living being. That's why again the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 16 and 17 talking about this same bread says the bread of God is life. Life. And when that life or that bread is given then you are quickened into action. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then in the book of the prophet Ezekiel chapter 37, 
the dry bones of representing the people of Israel in the valley had life only when the prophet prophesied life to it. It was that bread that God said from the four ends of the earth prophesied life unto the dead bones and then they were quickened into action. He said it became innumerable number because that is what gives life. So the spirit of God gives life for without it you cannot have life in you. That's why it's important that we open ourselves to receive this power and this authority that gives meaning to our existence and then our faith in Christ Jesus because it will not happen except we have been energized by him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, this spirit of God again has a character. What I identify and what theologians have this, they identified as divine character. And that is when you begin to talk about the personality of the Holy Spirit. He is a person. He's not removed from the Father and the Son, but rather he has the same divine identity with him. And that's why Jesus says that when you offend the Holy Spirit, then sometimes it's difficult to be forgiven. But we pray that God will help to forgive us out of his mercy and loving kindness in the name of Jesus. And so he has a divine identity and nature. That's why you don't need to offend the Holy Spirit. When we have him, then we are better off. That's why Jesus had to tell his disciples, you will receive him. And when you receive him, these are what will happen. One of them, he says that the Holy Spirit will be your helper. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, many of us would like to have helpers. Abby? Abby? Eh? Ask your neighbor, who is your helper? What did he tell you? Eh? Are you sure it's God? Your husband? Eh? I go tell him more. See you deny him. Your husband. God is our word helper. The spirit of God is our helper. That's why the psalmist would then tell us in Psalm 1 to 1. I look to the hills and the mountains. From where shall my help come from? He said, my help shall come from who? The Lord who made what? Heaven and what? Earth. That is one of those things that Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do. And then he is a teacher. He bears the truth of God. And he says he will lead you to the complete what? Truth. Praise the Lord. And then again, this spirit will do what? Illuminate. It will enlighten you. And when he enlightens you, your spirit and your life will be patterned according to divine plan. So that is why the Holy Spirit is important and is an experience that we all need in order to be able to witness for Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. He reveals hidden secrets. When you are attuned with him, when you have a connection with him, he reveals hidden secrets to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. In Acts chapter 5, Peter had to confront Ananias who lied to him. He said, you are not lying to man, but you lie to what? God. And he made a proclamation and said, because you have lied to the Spirit of God, you will die. And he died what? Instantly. And the wife came, thinking also like the husband who she also lied. And instantly the corpse was also carried like that of the husband was carried. So then you don't lie to the Holy Spirit. And then he reveals things. Dear friends, it's important that we pray for this outpouring of the Spirit of God upon us. Now the question will we we be, how do we acquire this power? How do I get this power? Amen. Sometimes 
like now politicians are campaigning. Abi, why are they campaigning? Huh? They want to get what? They want to get power. They want to get the power to govern a state, local government, senator, a house of assembly member, lawmaker, his excellency, to be called a honorable member of the world house. They, that is why they are campaigning. Now, as a child of God, how do you acquire this power? Do you just pick it on the road? In the last few days, we are doing the novena to the world. I didn't hear you. Some people are keeping quiet because they did not come. Amen. What is the essence of this waiting? Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Wait in what? Jerusalem. Until you receive the word power from above. And then when you receive the power from above. Then you will become my word. Witnesses. Beginning from Jerusalem. Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world, of the earth. Amen. Amen. But you must wait, which means there must be a moment of prayer. You must pray and study the word of God in order to be given this power and authority. Secondly, you must fast. You must fast in order to acquire this power. In the book of Numbers, where there was a Pentecost experience, where power was given, in the book of Numbers chapter 10 from verse 11 where God said to Moses select 70 elders of Israel to come up the mountain so that I can take some of the spirit that is in you and put it on what? on them so that they will help you to govern the people to lead the people and that was happened they had to be called up to a place of prayer fasting and preparation and on that day the spirit was given to them by God because they waited and they prepared so if you want to acquire that power you must wait you must pray you must study the word of God so that through it you will be empowered and energized by the spirit of God and of course in that particular text of scripture when they on that day two persons absconded they refused to go up the mountain whatever their reasons are but eventually some scholars tell us that those persons those two men we are not happy with Moses his pattern of governance and his person so they refused to go praise the Lord praise the Lord they remained in the camp but when the hour of visitation come what happened? God located them where they were in the camp. I pray for someone here today that through your thoughts for God, God will locate you. Amen. That the Holy Spirit of God will locate you. Amen. That even sometimes when you do not desire, He will desire for you and He will fish you out wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Amen. Child of God, you've been destined for blessing by God and someone says no that blessing will not come to you i pray that the holy spirit will tear every barrier and locate you in that place in the name of jesus when you are identified by him it doesn't matter where men put you he will come for you amen the power of the holy spirit is contagious everybody say that yes contagious It moves from person to word. Person. It's effective. Paul, Saul in 1 Samuel was going and he met a band of prophets and then because Samuel had told him that he will meet them when he met them on the way, Paul began to do what? Prophesied because the spirit transferred from the prophets to do what to him. And people began to say, Is Paul among the prophets? Amen. I pray for someone here this morning. Because of the quickening action of the Holy Spirit in your life, men will begin to ask, How come you got here? How come the so much manifestation in your life? 
How come so much blessing in your life? How come so much success in your life? The success that God had patterned for you, may it locate you in the name of Jesus. That is what the Spirit of God does for us. And so my dear friends, we pray today that this Spirit will be given to us by God. I know we already have the Spirit. But there's something again I like to point out this morning. This Spirit of God, you will notice in the, Old, in the New Testament, precisely in the Acts of the Apostles experience, in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, the people heard the disciples speaking in different words, tongues and languages. Paul, when he went to Lyconia, also preached and taught, though they didn't understand the language of the people, but the people understood them. Amen. The, the, the Holy Spirit gives you a universal language, and that is the language of words, love. I don't know, look at the person by your side in this church. Do you know him or her? Do you know the person? Are you sure? What is the person's name? Because you know me, Father Ben. You say Father Ben. Some of us, we don't know the person that is by your side right now. But there is a particular language that made you accommodate the person by your side without saying, why is this woman or why is this man sitting by me? Do you know the language? What language? Language of words, love. And that is what brings about our understanding. And so they spoke that language. And then something again about the Holy Spirit as it was given to the early church is that there were physical manifestations. First in Acts chapter 2, second in Acts chapter 8, third in Acts chapter 19, and then in Acts chapter 10. There were physical manifestations where people were prayed over and they began to do what? Speak in tongues and, and manifest. Those were transitional moments of the Holy Spirit manifestation in the church. And those demonstrations and actions, those physical manifestations are not ordinarily supposed to be normative. It must not be a standard we look up to each time we talk about the experience of the Holy Spirit. Now, in the new dispensation, you talk about the Holy Spirit as not being, uh, at that point, it was transitional, but now it is no longer in that manner. So you don't necessarily have to look for those physical manifestations. And that's why Paul in Galatians chapter 3 then will now say that now when you receive the message of salvation and accept it, you walk in the Spirit. Amen. 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 Sorry, can I see that text in Galatians chapter 3 please from verse 1. Amen. There Paul had to berate the people and he said, You foolish Galatians, who put a spell on you? Because your very eyes had a clear description of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Tell me this one thing. Did you receive God's spirit by doing what the law requires or by hearing the gospel and believing. That's the gospel of what? Salvation. How can you be so foolish? You began by God's spirit. Do you now want to finish by your own word? Power. Did your experience mean nothing at all? Surely it meant something. But just the emphasis is from verse 1 to 3. We are in our talks about the message of what? Salvation. And in our context, we receive this spirit. We, we must not have the transient 
manifestation where you now see people speaking in tongues and breaking their heads and all that in order for them to ex to believe that they have the spirit of God but we have been given that spirit by God himself and so my dear brothers and sisters as we celebrate this day we pray that the Holy Spirit will quicken us into action in the name of Jesus we pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit we will be delivered in the name of Jesus we pray that the Spirit of God that hovered over the surface of the earth that in those areas of our lives where we have deadness in us we will be revived by him in the name of Jesus let us rise and pray Sorry, why I can we recite that? Give me that. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered dead and was buried. And rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory. To judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the faithful. Sorry, some of those who have been identified, can you come forward? Those who pray for us in Igbo, Ogoni, Ikwere, French, Hausa, Yoruba. On this great day, when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, let us ask God our Father to renew each one of us in his church and the world through his Spirit, so that all may be filled with his power.
make our prayers through Christ our Lord. by the Spirit of God but when we yield unto him life is restored life is given back to us because he is the source of life the Ru'ah of God it is he who quickens in us that which is dead I don't know the situation that you find yourself that sometimes you don't even have a hunger for God have you asked him to give you this power that the God should reanimate you again to be able to walk for him, to be able to be a witness, to be able to experience him. Probably situations you cannot even explain have you presented it to him. When Job had a problem, he aligned himself with the Spirit of God. And God eventually brought about back life and joy to him and his life and his family. What about Daniel who was thrown in the lion's pit? The Spirit of God located him and brought about his deliverance. Paul and Silas were thrown in prison by the Spirit of the Lord again located them and quickened them to action. And in fact, liberated them and began to use them to work for God. Speak to him. 
speak to him. That situation that is making you to be scared. Secrets that we cannot see. He came upon the disciples on this day. Marvels we are wrought through their hands. Crippled people we are made to walk. Sick people receive the healing. Displaced people we are renewed. Those who mourned received joy. experiences we are removed in Jesus name as a church and as a family of faith once more, please can I, can I can you just lift up your right hand? We once more appeal to heaven on this day of the Pentecost that the spirit of death that has engulfed this church in the last few months on this day of Pentecost. Because we have a legal right to make decrees. Joining my faith with your faith. We decree that every spirit of death and every smoke of death in this environment and in this church will be dissipated in the name of Jesus. Any form of grave, spiritual grave that has been dug, we close it this very minute. We invoke the Holy Spirit to close that grave. Is there any bus that has been packed to pick people to the other side? Let that bus knock engine in the name of Jesus. Let that vehicle knock engine in the name of Jesus. We set it on fire with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We release the smart bomb of the Holy Ghost onto it and scatter it in the name of Jesus. Every projected attack on the church, particularly on this church, may that attack fail in the name of Jesus. Many of us, our finances are under attack. Our marriages and our families are under attack. On this day, we appeal that the Holy Spirit, the finger of God, will remove such attacks in the name of Jesus. That his presence that brought about a turnaround in the life of the early church will bring about a turnaround in our families in the name of Jesus. May we experience new unction, new grace, new expansion, new increase and new life and may the joy of this day fill us and in the name of Jesus Raya, 